what is going on guys welcome back to the channel for another video as you guys can see we are in my home studio i'm not in the truck i'm not on the road right now currently i'm doing my 34 hour reset so i want to go ahead and drop this video for you guys basically kind of going through some of the setup and also giving you guys some helpful tips to kind of help you save money and also save time as well all right so man let's go ahead and get into it all right, so first, let's go ahead and get into as far as for your setup. So I know many of you probably already know that, you know, or already have gotten like your truck, your trailer, equipment items and all of those things. So I'll kind of go over that in another video, but simply just with setup, um, just getting started up, there are um, fees that, you know, you may not know about that I want to get into, um, or you don't know exactly where to navigate to to even start off at. So. Basically, where you want to start off at, and I'm going to go through all these little bullet points through my phone, um, so I have them written down. I would just suggest that you guys go ahead and get a pen and paper out as well, just so you can go ahead and start taking some notes on some of the tips that I'm going to go ahead and give you guys. So where you want to start off at first, you want to start off by going to the FMCSA website. Um, this is where basically you'll go ahead and start going for your DOT number, your MC number, um, all those other different um, certificates that you'll also need as well. You'll want to start there first. Um, let me kind of walk you guys through the process. So dot number is the first thing that you want to get. All right. Your dot number um, is going to your initial fee for the dot number is going to be three hundred dollars. So when you go to the FMCSA website, you will have a search engine on the top. And basically you just type in dot or dot number or DOT number. Some of you guys say that, but I just instead of just saying DOT, just go ahead and just say dot. Um, but you'll get your DOT number on there. Uh, well, you'll type in DOT and you'll go ahead and submit in for the application. Application is probably going to take about 30 minutes. It's pretty lengthy and um, there are some questions on there um, that you will need to answer. And what I did was basically went on YouTube. I saw somebody else kind of going through the application and I kind of walked and modeled through there. Um, but you'll want to keep your application basic and you also want to keep it simple. Um, and I'm gonna also go into something else with that um, because your insurance and your dot application will pretty much match. It's also gonna tell kind of like uh, your insurance agent basically what route you wanna go as far as your quote and as far as what you want to uh, move as far as your freight. All of that is gonna be in there. So all of them kind of synchronize themselves in, in, uh, with themselves, right? So insurance and DOT. Once you give your insurance agent the DOT number, all the stuff that you filled out in the application is going to show up when they're doing your pricing out your quote uh, for your insurance. So that's why I say keep it simple, because if you start going in there and putting all these different things that you're going to be carrying, um, basically, it's going to add and, and, and it's going to increase your rate on your on your quote with your insurance as well. So um, when you go through that, make sure you just keep it simple, uh, keep it basic and also always know that you can also change it. You can always change. All it does is take a form um, to change or whatever it is that you want to change. And then from there, um, you can start carrying different things or insuring different things as well. So $300 for your DOT number. All right. Uh, the next thing. So you do your DOT number and you'll probably get your DOT number probably within like five to seven business days. So five to seven business days, they'll send you an email telling you that, that this is your DOT number and anything that the FMCSA actually emails you or sends you, you definitely want to keep it into like a binder. All right. So you want to print it out and keep it inside of a binder. The next thing that you're actually going to go through as well is going to be these different little fees that you would have. So um, the next thing. So later on in your application, um, What's gonna happen is that they're gonna say the next thing that you need to submit for your application is gonna be a VOC3, right? And if I'm not mistaken, a VOC3 basically tells FMCSA how many um, trucks or how many vehicles that you'll have that'll be operating for your company, all right? So um, the VOC3 is what you're gonna need. But the thing about it is that you're gonna be waiting for your insurance agent to contact you. So one thing that's going to happen is that once you submit your application, your information is going to be solicited to all these different companies. So you'll have dispatching, you're going to have brokers, uh, you're going to have factoring companies, you're going to have different people reaching out to you. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you now, you're going to have to go through probably and not even over exaggerating on this number, but you're probably going to have about 50 to 60 people emailing you, texting you, 
calls that you're gonna be getting throughout the day. Uh, so this 50, 60 is per day that you're gonna have to go through, and maybe even more, um, that you have to go through each day. Um, basically, everybody trying to solicit their business and trying to win you over to their company. Um, but you will have one person that you're gonna be looking out for, which is gonna be your FMCSA agent. So there's gonna be an agent that's gonna be assigned directly to you that you can call at any time if they're available. You can call at any time they can answer any questions or concerns that you may have, all right? The way I found mine, which I saw like two emails that I did see, but then I also got a voicemail um, from my agent. And they were just basically stating, you know, hey, I'm, I work with FMCSA directly. Um, you know, I'm based out of this place or whatever. And basically I'm one that is assigned to you um, so give me a call back so we can go ahead and uh, continue your application and file for your BOC3, okay? So you definitely want to look out for that person um, once you do file for your DOT. But when you do find that person and you do get in contact with them, what's the one thing that they're going to be looking for? Hmm, payments. So they're looking for money. They're going to take money from you. So um, they're reaching out to you basically to go ahead and get the debit card from your credit card. And basically, these are the fees, and this is what everything's going to tally up on that day when you do reach out or when you do get a hold of them. So the first one is going to be the 49 CFR 391. This is going to be for your driver's registration. So this is $289. So this is outside of the 300. Um, also, you're going to do your VOC3. Your VOC3 is $80, and then you're going to have your M. SC 150 and that's going to be $350. So all of this total is going to be $719 that you have to do. And this is going to be for, with your doc as well. So if you add the $300, you're going to be at $1,019 with all of these different uh, ones here. And this is going to basically for owner operators as well. Um, so if you want to be an owner operator, these are going to be the fees that you're going to, that you're going to have when applying for your doc and your MC or DOT number or in your MC number. So all of that comes up to $719 um, that you have to take care of that day. You also will have to do your, um, I forgot exactly, I know it's UR something. Um, I think it's like 30 something dollars that you have to do and that's annually that you will have to um, take care of, but there'll be another agent that's gonna take care of that and also sign you up for your safety registration as well. Um, they'll make sure they're gonna check your, you know, your um, driving history. Uh, so they'll transfer you over to another agent at, at the FMCSA and basically they're going to check your driving history, get all of that. And then, y'all, of course, you got to pay for that stuff as well. I want to say it's like $39, $38 or something like that. And then from there, uh, they'll send you what your driving history is. And then you want to make sure you keep that also in your binder. The other thing that you also want to do while you're taking care of your DOT uh, number, your DOT number and your MC uh, number as well is you want to go ahead and look for a facility where you can get your physical done so your DOT physical you want to get that done I went and took mine to CVS there was a CVS close to our house um, that actually does do them so I went there I think I paid $160 or something like that if I'm not mistaken um, you also want to get that taken care of as well those will last um, for two years so two years um, once you get it, you also want to keep that in your binder as well, because just in case you do get pulled over, they are going to be looking for your, um, your physical your physical card. And it's not going to be a physical card, like a medical card that you get from your job or something like that. It's going to be actually a sheet of paper that I have, you know, like the expiration date and all that stuff and that you pass, you know, your physical. So you definitely want to make sure you keep that. Now, that's also going to segue me over to your insurance, right? So you finished um, your application, right? And now your application is going through processing. So you already got your dot number that came within five to seven business days, but now you need your MC number. So they took all of these three payments from you that day. So now that all of that is done, they're gonna tell you, now for your MC number and authority, you're gonna have to wait 21 days, right? which you'll get your MC number before those 21 days. You'll get that in the email and you'll also get a, a, a paper in the mail um, letting you know that you do have an MC. But the thing about it is that you are not ready to operate yet until they actually grant you your authority. So it's totally different. That was something I did not know. I thought once I got my dot, once I got my MC, I'm going to start operating. No, 
you want to wait and there's going to be an exact date they're going to give you to they're going to say hey your authorities is going to come in on this date and this is when you can actually start operating you know intrastate or interstate interstate of course you can cross state lines you all around um, intrastate means you just literally where you are at whatever state you're in that's where you're operating solely there um so they're gonna let you know what day you can start operating but they're gonna tell you if you do not have insurance already and we don't see any insurance on file that's what they'll more than likely say we don't see any insurance on file so what you want to do is go ahead and get insurance so um we can go ahead and get your uh, your authorities pushed over you know 21 days and then you go ahead and start operating all right so when for me i started thinking right so I'm like, all right, because I, I didn't have insurance when I when I did all of this. When I did all of this, I didn't have any insurance at all. So I went on ahead and reached out to um, Progressive, which most truckers, you know, go with Progressive. They're clean cut. Um, they're, you know, it, everything is exactly the way it is. You know, it's really simple, simplistic. Um, and you download the app and you can call them at any time. 24 hour customer service, I'm not mistaken. Um, so I went with Progressive as far as the insurance and when I reached out, um, I didn't even have my dot number at that time, right? I didn't even have a dot number. This is just myself, right? Um, I didn't have a dot number. I told the lady, hey, I'm about to apply for it today to get, you know, my dot number. So she really didn't have much to go off of as far as like, what am I going to be carrying, my equipment, you know, certain things that I wanted to do. She, you know, she didn't really know. She, she just made a generic um, quote for me, right? So... As I get in this quote, I'm gonna tell you guys what we quoted. This was just a generic quote, right? So this quote that she quoted me, um, this is a, a 12 month policy. So this is a 12 month policy, commercial insurance uh, for Hot Shot. What she uh, quoted me, my total policy premium was $33,713. <laughs> If I wanted to pay it in full, I would get a discount of $5,054. That means that I would have paid in full $28,659. All right. Now, pretty much on the, pretty much two options, which most people are going to go with. They're going to go with either 11 month payment period or a 10 month payment period, depending on how much down payment that you want to put down on your uh, policy. So the first one, if it was 11 months, I would have put 16.6 uh 16.67 percent down which is going to have me at five thousand three hundred and sixty dollars and seven cents and if i did uh the 10 months then that will put me at six thousand four hundred and twenty five dollars and eighty cents the monthly payment for both of those you're looking at 26.71 and then i'm also looking at 28.49 for those so you're looking at a twenty six hundred dollar payment each month or you're looking at a $2,800 payment each month. That's your mouth. Okay, sorry. Do it nicely. Okay? Oh, yeah. Now, what does all this come with? So this is going to come with you got to have so FMCSA, you got to have at least a $750,000 policy. Right? With FMCSA, that's the minimum requirement. But now, when you want to book loads with brokers, the broker is going to look for a million dollar policy. That's their minimum. So I would just go ahead and advise you guys, go ahead and get a million dollar policy. So a million dollar policy is what you're going to be, uh, what you're going to look for, what you want to get quoted for. Um, of course, you have your unsured motorist, you have comprehensive, you have collision, roadside assistance, you know, uh, you know, your medical expenses, your towing expenses, all of that stuff you can all add. And all of those things are going to be uh, basically optional. I think besides comprehensive, um, the rest of the stuff, um, roadside assistance, un uh, uninsured motorists, all of those things are going to be optional. You do not have to have any of those things if you do not want them. And that's one also another reason why people go with progressive is because some insurance uh, companies, they require you to have that. Um, just because you never had a commercial insurance before, you never operated a truck. So they're saying, nope. If you get into any one of these things, you're going to have to have this in which, of course, your premium is higher and your monthly payment is higher as well. Um, so a million dollar policy is the first thing, right? 
Um, the next thing is that you want to have cargo insurance. Your cargo insurance has to be at least a hundred thousand dollars. So you got to have a hundred thousand. Also on loads, I have seen, which is only one time I've seen it, where I was on a load, about to try to call and book a load, but in the details it said that you must have two hundred and fifty thousand dollar cargo insurance. So you do have loads that will require a higher cargo insurance amount. But again, um, I've only seen it one time, so you can pick and choose on that. Uh, the last thing is also you want to insure your trailer, um, and you can pick and choose what you want to insure. You know, insure it with uh, what's the amount that you want to insure it with, and also you know deductibles and all of those things. Um, but that's what basically this thirty-three thousand um, dollar you know for twelve months came down to, and then also you know you put your down payment down, and then you just break it over you know the eleven month or the ten months, and that's what your insurance will come out to. So I say all of that to say this. So I call and I say, hey, you know, they, they tell me you got to wait um, a total of, you know, these days, 26 days. So they're like, you got to get insurance. We don't see it on file. Go ahead and get your insurance. And I started thinking to myself, if I get insurance day one of these 26, what's going to happen? Of course, after those 26 days, what's going to happen? Or 21 days, I'm sorry. Um, what's going to happen after these 21 days? So then what will happen is that I'm going to have, right after that, my monthly payment is going to be coming. So after those 21 days, um, my monthly payment is going to be looking at me right after I go ahead and, 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 and have my authority and I haven't got a load yet. So one of the tips that I say that I did that helped me with basically preserving some of my, some of my capital was I waited until around like the 17th, 18th day to get my, my insurance. So I went on ahead and got the quote day one, but then when I went to go ahead and purchase the insurance, I waited until like the 17th, 18th day to purchase the insurance. So then I had a few more days for them to go ahead and basically get my authorities ready for me to go ahead and start operating. Now, the other thing that you want to do, and I want to also give you guys this tip to those that do not know anything about this process, is once you get your insurance, so let's just say you do the same thing I did. You wait those 17, 18 days, then go ahead and get your insurance. What you want to do, as soon as you go ahead and get your insurance, you go ahead and pay that premium, and now you are with that insurance company. The first thing you want to go, or the, the next thing that you want to go ahead and tell the insurance agent is saying, hey, I need my insurance uh, policy communicated over to the FMCSA because if you just get the insurance, you get off the phone and FMCSA don't know about it, they won't be notified about, uh, about it until you actually have the insurance agent notify them, letting them know like, hey, they went on ahead and got insurance and it's, and it's good to go. From there, FMCSA is going to see if you actually meet the minimum requirements. They're going to see if you have a, at least a $750,000 policy, which again, I recommend getting a million because brokers, the way you can book loads, you need a million. All right. So they're going to look for $100,000 cargo insurance. They're going to look for, you know, um, and your trailer is also insured as well. Once you have those things, um, they'll go ahead and give you your authorities from there or they'll tell you. So you can call on that day and say, hey, I was told on this day I'll be ready to operate. Um, and they'll say, yes, you are ready to operate. Go ahead and go. We're also going to send you a form. And you also want to keep this form. So usually it's going to take about seven business days for you to receive the form saying, hey, this person is approved to operate. And you want to keep that also in your binder as well. All right. So communicate. So definitely I would just say wait just so you do not have another insurance payment come out and you have not even booked the load yet. I would say that next monthly payment, you definitely want to make sure that your truck, you may not be able to pay all of it through your truck. You may have to come out of some capital but at least you'll have some type of income coming in by your next payment for your uh, insurance so you can pay it through your company as opposed to paying it through your capital. So hopefully that helps out um, for you guys um, and not just get insurance day one and you wait those 21 days because then you have another payment coming out. All right, let me stop repeating myself. Um, the other tip I want to give you guys. So this is something I did not do, but this is something that you guys can do. Take advantage of it as well is um you know this insurance is, is high right you hear thirty three thousand dollars for one year thirty three thousand there are some people that don't even make that annually in, at their jobs you know and you're paying that in insurance 
right? Um, so let's just say uh, one of the tips that you can do, I didn't do it, I didn't take advantage of this, um, which I could have if I wanted to, but I, I did something else to um, also bring down my insurance. Um, is, is The first thing that you can do is, let's just say, if you have a truck or if you even don't even have a truck, what you can do is you can find an older truck, right? So let's just say if you already are, you know for yourself, you're like, hey, I'm gonna know I'm gonna get this 2020 truck, right? I'm gonna, I know for a fact I'm gonna get this 2020 truck. I'm just working out some things to go ahead and get the deal you know, pushed over. Um, but you don't have a truck yet, or let's just say you already have a 2020, either or. You go ahead and find a truck that is older. So let's just say you're looking for a 2020, but you found a 2000 truck, right? You got the VIN number. You can call your insurance and say, hey, I want to insure this truck. I got the VIN number. You give them the VIN number. Uh, they give you a quote. You say everything looks fine. You get all the, you know, the million dollar policy, hundred thousand dollar cargo. You get the, 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 the trailer insurance as well. Um, you get all of those things on a 2000, uh, on a 2000 model truck. From there, it's going to be a lot cheaper uh, to do a down payment on that one, your premium is going to be a lot cheaper than it would be for a 2020 truck, right? So you can go ahead and do it that way and have that insured just so you can go ahead and pay that premium, which is going to be cheaper on a 2000 truck than it is a 2020. And then once you go ahead and have that insurance, uh, you can wait. Now you can wait a little bit of time, let's just say a few days or whatever, call back in and say, hey, actually, I went on ahead and bought this truck, the 2020, I have the VIN number, and then change it. What will happen is that there will be a premium difference from the 2002 to 2020, but what will happen is that they're going to put it in your monthly payment. So it may be, let's just say, $500. So if your payment was $1,500 a month for the 2000 model truck, They'll just add a one lump sum payment of 500 towards the premium toward that. So now it's 2,000. You will pay 2,000 for that for that next month just because of the insurance premium change. And then from there, they're going to quote you another uh, a monthly amount. So the monthly amount, of course, will be cheaper than your premium. So then let's just say if it was $1,500. Now let's just say for 2,000, it may be $1,800. So you made two thousand dollar payment for that next month just because of the the change and that premium went over, that lump sum went over. But then now each month it's going to be eighteen hundred dollars, right? So now it's just saving you. And I'm just giving you just some hypothetical. I'm not saying that this is what the insurance premium would be or wouldn't be or, or whatever. I'm just giving you guys some hypothetical that can save you some capital, um, just so you can make sure you still stay afloat while you're going through the process of getting started up. All right, so. Um, definitely want to possibly do that. That's one way you can get around as far as saving some of that capital. The other one, this is what I did. So when I reached out to the insurance uh, agent and they gave me, you know, this quote, um, I didn't like the quote. So of course, what I wanted to do is I wanted to change the quote. So what I did was I started removing, you know, uninsured motorists because again, I understand to me, and this is just me. And this is no shot towards anybody that may be an insurance agent or working in, in the insurance field, but I just feel like to me it's a scam, right? Um, I've had accidents, I've had uh, you know different things as far as the insurance. You know, um, there's times where you don't have any tickets, you have a clean driving history, but then all of a sudden your your insurance skyrockets. But then you could have an accident and then nothing changes, you know. So. To me, I don't know, man. I don't know if they pick and choose. I don't know what's really what really goes on with insurance or whatever. But to me, I just feel like it's all a scam. So to me, I just try to play the system. So I started taking away a lot of the things or whatever that you know that they had on there, of course, um, to bring down um, my, my my premium, right? Um, I also went on ahead and changed my deductible. So I went on ahead and went for the highest deductible to go ahead and change it down simply because I know I can change it later. So I went on ahead and changed deductibles, put them down at the highest deductible that I could put them at and got the most basic insurance. So now what that means is that when I went through my DOT application, I only went in for common goods. I didn't put in like I can, I know I can pick up a boat and put it on my, on my trailer. I know I can get a tractor. I know I can get cars. I know I can get farming or, you know, tools and all of those. And all of this, this there's going to be a, a place in the application with a bunch of boxes and it's going to have what are different things that you want to pick up or different things that you want to carry as far as freight. 
they're going to have common goods, but then they're going to have these, like, um, these miscellaneous little items on there that they're going to say, um, personal items, um, you know, like I told you, boats, uh, jet skis, they're going to, they're going to have all these different things that you, and I dismiss all that, even though I know I can carry it and you will be tempted to go ahead and put that on there, but trust me, do not just keep it one little thing, common goods. And I kept on moving forward with the application again. When you have your dot number, the insurance agent is going to ask you for your dot number. And once they get your dot number, they put it in. All of those things that you put on those little check boxes there, it's all going to come over to your to your insurance. And then that's when you're going to see a totally different rate than you would be with just common goods. All right. So just keeping it basic, keeping it simple. And what I did is I just took off a lot of things, kept my insurance all simple. And then from there, I'm going to give you guys, so the down payment we talked about was what, $5,800 and like $6,400. When I did that, I actually got mine down to like, I want to say $3,400 uh, was my premium that I paid down, right? So I'm, I saved $2,000, two to $3,000 by just changing it that way, as opposed to putting all that money down for my insurance and then... <laughs> The other thing, the other thing will happen is that, so now my payment for my 2015 truck, my 2024 North Star, and also for, um, for, uh, for my trailer. Oh, and then also my, uh, <laughs> and also my, sheesh. Truck, trailer, <laughs> cargo insurance. Sorry. So my truck, trailer, and cargo insurance, um, my premium came out to like $3,400, um, if I'm not mistaken. And then my monthly payment was actually $1,900. All right, so I'm paying $1,900 as opposed to the uh, 24 or the 28. All right, so it came out to $1,900. So um, also, another thing that I also did was that I did not initially at the beginning I did not put down cargo insurance so I only had the truck and I also had the trailer I did not have cargo insurance at the beginning either all right so what I did was that once I paid the initial premium so all I want to do is get rid of the first big lump sum that you're going to be paying is the initial premium payment once I got done with the initial premium payment what I did now is went back and called them and said, hey, I want to go ahead and add cargo insurance. What they did was that they said, all right, if you're going to add the cargo insurance, what we're going to do is we're going to add a, that premium payment over to your next monthly payment. So my next monthly payment was around $2,200, right? My next uh, payment was like $2,200, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or uh, $2,700. I think it went up. Yeah, it went up. It went up quite a bit. I think it was like $500 difference. So we went from 19 to 27, and then my initial payments after that were going to be $2,200 or $2,100. I got to look at it again. Um, but it's around 2021, something like that. Um, so that's another way, basically, of just getting over the hurdle of paying, again, that big lump sum of insurance. Because, again, you know, depending on your driving history, that's also going to be a factor as well. Um, I did have one ticket on mine, uh, which I had a few, uh, a couple years ago, uh, coming back from Alabama. Um, but again, also another thing, a great thing uh, that you want to do also is making sure that you do speak to an insurance agent because uh, one great thing about an insurance agent is that they can remove, depending on the type of ticket that you do have, they can remove tickets um, so you don't have that spike um, in your insurance or in your premiums as well. So that's another reason why you definitely want to get a quote from an insurance agent first and then ask them, hey, can you remove this? Now, if it's some type of like reckless driving, super speeder and stuff like that, I don't believe they'll remove it but or DUIs or anything. But if you do have, you know, failure to stop or something like that, they can remove those type of tickets to where your insurance don't, 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 they don't have that huge spike in it. All right. So that's just a couple of things that I did was, again, I altered my insurance policy to myself. So I did get a professional to, to give me one. But then after that, I altered it myself. But then I also removed the cargo insurance and then went back in, placed it back on there. And now, you know, I just make my monthly payments and we move forward from there. All right. So you have your setup, you have your insurance. You got the DOT number. You also have your MC number and you're ready to operate. 
the next thing that I definitely want to go over is ooh, it's going to be carrier bag. So there is a video I was watching right before I got into Hot Shot and I forgot the, the actual person's name. I definitely got to shout him out in this video. I'll put it somewhere in the video. Um, but I was watching his video and it was his first load and I heard him say something about carrier package. And I didn't know like there was like back office stuff, you know, after you get your MC and your, and your DOT number, I didn't know there was like back office stuff that you had to do. I thought you literally just call brokers, book loads, you pick it up, you drop it off, that was it. But there is a lot of back office stuff that you do have to do um, in this business. So I saw his video and the, he was talking to the broker and in that conversation, the broker was like, hey, I don't think we can get you today because we don't have any paperwork. We don't have nothing on file for you. And he says, I signed the carrier package. I don't know why you guys don't. Let me go back in my emails. So I was like, okay, so there is something called a carrier package. Now, you call your broker. So let's just say you start day one. You got your, uh, you got your authorities. You start in day one. You call a broker and they're willing to work with you. The first thing they're going to do is take your MC number. You get your MC and they're going to look to see if you're on file with their company. They don't see you on file because it's your first time booking loads. So then what they're going to do is they're going to say, hey, we need you to go ahead and sign the carrier package. You've got different companies, different people, different way carrier packages may be sent out or it has to be filed. You've got some that's like maybe 11, 12 pages long. You've got some that are only like three pages long. But I will say some of the things that you want to get ready for as far as for your uh, carrier package being filled out is a W-9. You'll definitely need um, your insurance to send you a certificate of insurance. So you'll definitely need a certificate of insurance. Um, you'll need a notice of intent. And you will also need... Um, And then maybe, uh, it's, I know it's a few other things that you may need as well. I might have to go through a carrier package and, 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 and speak on it. But I know those are a few things. You will need some some documentation for yourself. Oh, your EIN number, you're going to need. Um, so yeah, you'll need uh, different things as far as with your business um, that you will need to sign a carrier package. Some of them are really easy. All you do is just browse. You hit the browse button. You already got it in your phone. You'll just click and it's uploaded and it's good to go. Some of the stuff you actually got to type it all out on your phone or your tablet or computer or whatever. You do have to type all that stuff out and it can be really tedious. I will say this as well, but another tip for you guys. So let's just say you book a load, right? And it's your first time booking this load and you see a load and I'm gonna just hypothetically speak again. Let's just say you see a load that's 500 pounds going from here to here and it's paying $2,000. And you say, man, I really need that. That'll take care of my insurance. Um, or that'll help me with my mortgage or, or whatever the case may be, right? And you're really excited about, about booking this load and they're willing to work with you. Well, they send you a carrier package and it's tedious. It's a tedious package or whatever. It's not an updated system. They got an older system and you got to hand type everything in or, you know, um, you may have some difficulties trying to upload these files because it's JPEG and PDF and all of this or whatever, right? And the load is still on the load board. So now while you are handling your difficulties with this carrier package, somebody else then called in that already worked with them and now got the load. You will have people like that sometimes, right? So one of the things that you want to definitely do is that if you find a load and a carrier is willing to work with you or whatever, while you're filling out the package or whatever, go ahead or before you can fill out the package, go ahead and let them know like, hey, Go ahead, can you go ahead and take this off of the website? Can you take this off of the load board? Um, because I want to be able to get this load, right? Go ahead and ask them or tell them like, hey, you know, I want, can I get this off the load board just so I can go ahead and exclusively work with this load as opposed to somebody else getting it. And nine times out of 10, they'll go ahead and do it. All right. So you definitely want to do that just so you don't lose out on any load while selling, signing the carrier package. The other thing about carrier packages is that Every this is what I did not know at all, and I knew about a carrier package, but I did not know this information that I'm about to tell you guys. Just know that it's not just one carrier package that you have to sign, and then that's it. Or there's just you know this massive master carrier package, and then all brokers get it, and then you're good to go. Nope, it is not like that. So if you call ABC Logistics and you 
fill out that carrier package with ABC Logistics, that's just ABC Logistics. If you got XYZ Logistics and you're working with them now, you gotta do a whole nother carrier package with them. So every single broker that is new that you're working with and you never worked with before, you gotta fill out a carrier package. So that's why I said it's a lot of back office stuff that you do have to do. Some of them are easier, some of them are a little bit more challenging that you have to do, but you do have to do it before you actually book the loan. So I just want you guys to know that. Just be prepared for that, that you do gotta sign a carrier package with every single broker that you work with that's new. Now, if you do it one time with that broker, so if you do it one time with ABC Logistics, that one time is the only time you have to do it. The next time you call in, you can see a load with ABC Logistics. You do not have to do another carrier package. They'll just get your MC. They already see that you own the files. They'll go ahead and negotiate the rate and you go ahead and book the load from there. But if it's anybody new, you will have to do a new carrier package. All right. Let's keep moving. All right, so I already went over that. All right, so factoring. So let's go over factoring. So the next thing is factoring companies. So now, what is a factoring company? So some of you guys may know, some of you guys may not know, um, but factoring is definitely is something vital in this trucking business, especially if you know, you're just starting out. And again, there will be a lot of brokers that will not work with you, but you gotta continue pounding the phones. That's, I'm telling you, that's key, is do not give up on those phone calls. Um, you got to continue pounding the phones and you may get 30 no's and one yes, but I'm telling you, you got to continue doing it and just building relationships with those brokers. All right. Factoring company is basically a company that is taking on the responsibility of debt that is owed. All right. So again, I'm going to use ABC logistics again. So let's just say you look on the low board and on the low board, you see ABC logistics, you see a map and you also see um, where it's going to and um, or where is it coming from, where is it going to. And you also have your rate, you have your, your um, dollar per mile. And on there, it's going to say days to pay. It may say on there 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. It may say two days. But the thing about it is that there's going to be a date on there of days to pay. So now it does not mean that they'll pay you in 30 days. It just means there's going to be people to pay you up to 30 days, right? So the reason why you want a factoring company, the factoring company is that middleman that says, hey, you know what? Instead of you waiting 30 days to get paid on the load that you delivered on the first of the month, and now you got to wait till the 30th of the month to get paid, we will take that responsibility, right? So now we will pay you same day or next day, and it'll come at a, a small cost, and then we will wait those 30, 60, 90, or two days or whatever to get paid. And we'll, we'll make sure we communicate with that logistic company and us, we'll communicate to get those to get those funds over to us, right? Um, so now my logistics, or I mean my logistics, my, um, my factoring company is Truckstop, right? So Truckstop is my factoring company. They charge us 3.25% per load. So 3.25%. So, uh, you guys can do the math or whatever, 3.25% with $30.25 if it's a $1,000 load um, is coming out and then I keep the rest of my money. And then what will happen is that they will receive $1,000 from ABC Logistics and then they also got additional $30.25. All right. Um, or $32.50. Or so, um, so yeah, so basically that's how it works. So now um, let's just say this. So now a lot of people want to know how you get paid. How do you, how do, you do the paperwork? So let's just say this. Um, I book with ABC Logistics and um, ABC Logistics basically is going to send me, once I book, they're going to send me a Raycon sheet. The Raycon sheet is going to have their, uh, they'll have their logo. So their letterhead is on the top of it. It'll have basically where's it going to and where's it coming from. It'll have the rate that you guys have negotiated on. Um, it'll have the pounds, it'll have the mileage, it'll have all of that and all the terms and conditions as far as for it, right? When you need to drop it off, when you got to pick it up, things of that nature is all in the Raycon sheet, all right? Um, you get that Raycon sheet. The one thing that's on the Raycon sheet that you will need is a pickup number. So you'll need a pickup number or a PU number is going to be on there. Um, or it may say PU or pickup. It may say, um, just say uh, pickup number or whatever but you will need a pickup number. Once you get to the actual place that you are going to go pick up, you will give them the pickup number. 
So you give them that pickup number and they'll say, all right, we got the paperwork here and we also know what it is that you are picking up. So they'll go ahead, tell their guys, go ahead and get X, Y, and Z prepared to put on their trailer. They'll get you loaded from that point. Once you get loaded, there's gonna be somebody, normally somebody working behind the desk or whatever, or somebody maybe you know on a port lift. They'll come with your paperwork, right? Um, so they'll have the work, uh, the, they'll have the paperwork, which is the, the bill of lading or the BOL. Um, they'll have that for you. And they'll ask you saying, hey, you need to sign this because we got you loaded and everything came out fine. We didn't damage nothing, nothing was damaged. No commodities were 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 were, were, uh, were damaged uh, from us loading you up. So you basically signed the bill of lading. That's one part of the bill of lading or the BOL that you um, you sign that first, right? Sign the date. Then you'll take that bill of lading with you. So you'll get a copy and they get a copy. So you take that with you, you put it, I put mine in my binder. So I put it in there. And now I'm taking this load over to um, the shipper or the customer or whatever um, that's going to be receiving it. So I take it to them. When I get out, the first thing I do is I get my BOL. Because of course I'm trying to get paid, right? So I get my BOL. And while I got my BOL, I hand it to them, to the receiver. The receiver sees it. They see what they're about to get. They're looking at it, seeing what they're going to get. They're going to match it to say, all right, you got these pipes or whatever, or you got this, you got that. They're gonna make sure everything matches from the BOL to what you got on your truck. Once all things match, they're gonna probably do like a quick little inspection just to make sure that everything looks fine. And then they go ahead and take it off of your truck. From there, you do not wanna forget because if they have it in their possession, um, you do not wanna forget that now you gotta get that BOL and they have to sign saying, hey, all the commodities on here were good. If nothing was damaged. You received it and everything was fine. They go ahead and they sign, they date and then they give it back to you. From there, I just take a picture. I take a picture of the BOL, and I also get the Raycon sheet that was initially sent over to me from the logistics company. I get that because that shows the rate, and the BOL shows that I received it fine, and um, I also shipped it over there, or you know, I delivered it to them fine as well. You take both of those things, and you send it in to your factoring company. Factoring company receives it. They communicate with ABC Logistics saying everything was fine. Yes, once they get the approval, they go ahead and send your money. You'll get an email saying um, load has been factored and within 24 hours, you're going to get paid. Depending on the time frame of the day, you can get paid the same day. So there's loads that I've done at, I delivered at 8, sent the rate con sheet at 8.30 and the BOL at 8.30 and I got paid around like 5, 6 o'clock. But then there's other ones where I probably delivered around 2 I sent it in around 2 to 2.30 to 3 o'clock. I sent it in and then didn't get paid until the next day. But it's either going to be same day or next day. And the money drops into my account and it's ready to use right then and there. All right. So factoring company. The other tip I want to give you guys with factoring, right, is you definitely want to make sure that before you book your loads, and you kind of got to do it simultaneously. So you've got to be really hands-on and you really got to be um, quick on your feet as well when you're calling these uh, these logistic companies brokers. So on the low board as well is that you will see the broker's MC and you'll also see the, bro the broker's um, DOT number. All right. What you want to do is let's just, I'm going to just use the same scenario. You see a low is 500 pounds going from here to here and it's $2,000. You get really excited. You're ready to book this load. And the one thing about it is that you want to check to see if the company is approved through your factoring company. I'm going to say about 80 to 85% of the people are approved to, you know, be factored so you can get your money same day or next day. But the other 15 to 20% of brokers are not approved through your factoring company. And I dealt with this one time when I went to New Mexico. Um, you've got to go on your, on your, um, you got to go on your load board and on your load board, it'll have on there saying factoring. When you click on it, it's going to say on the top, broker MC or broker uh, um, DOT number. You would take the broker's DOT number from that load board and you will paste it or you can type it on there, put it on there and you will click verify. When you click verify, it'll spin and it'll let you know instantly, just like that, not approved or it will say approved. If they are not approved, 
then that means basically you now have to wait. You're taking on the responsibility of waiting for that broker to pay you whatever time frame that they stated for them to pay you. All right. I did have to deal with that one time. There, it is a process, so you do have to end up creating your own invoice. So that means you typing up, you know, Word doc or PowerPoint or whatever. You do have to type up an invoice um, and send it to them uh, to the, you know, the dollar amount that you guys agreed on. Um, you do have to sign off on some, on some paperwork that they give you. Um, basically, once you deliver, they'll email you um, saying, hey, we need you to sign this paperwork. And then you'll send over an invoice. And then from there, um, you know, they'll, they'll tell you when they're going to send you your money. Uh, for mine, it took 15 days. It took about 15 days for um, that load from, from, um, from Georgia to New Mexico to come over to my account. All right. So you definitely want to make sure of that um, unless you got a bunch of capital. Um, I would definitely say go ahead and get a get a factory company. You want to just kind of go around. I looked at OTR; they were charging three point five percent. It was a couple other companies as well that was charging lower. But then when we looked on their reviews, uh, we didn't see really good reviews, so we ended up just going with Truck Stop. Um, we are month to month. Um, there's no recourse, so there's nothing like we gotta. Let's just say we only factor one load a year. Um, there's like, and we say, hey, we want to leave. There's nothing saying like, hey, you know what? You guys only factor one load. You got to do this amount of loads before you leave, or you got to factor this dollar amount before you leave. It's month to month. We can just leave. Um, and then it's 3.25% so, uh, a straight rate. Um, and we can call back in and see, hey, we factored this amount of money, you know, each month with you guys. Can you guys go down on the rate? And we can kind of negotiate from there. So that's another thing for you guys. Let's see here. Let's go through now. Let's go through the last one. So last one is definitely for new for new carriers, for new um, hotshot owner operators, or or even lease on as well. Um, some of the top companies, some of the top logistic companies, top brokers that we have worked with that has kept us busy um, on this journey here. So I'm gonna give you guys possibly the top five. Is I say top five, and I'll probably give you guys additional, uh, an additional uh, that you guys could possibly call on and work with. So the first one, the first one I want to give you guys, they have kept us busy. I'm not saying that they're the the best, but I will say that they have kept us busy. And I'm gonna give you guys the reason why I would say they're not the best. Um, is gonna be Total Quality Logistics. So TQL, you may see them as TQL on the logo or Total Quality Logistics. You can see them at either or. Um, but Total Quality Logistics have definitely have kept our wheels turning. Um, they are a big logistic company, so they post loads constantly. And it's all around, all around the state. So um, no matter where you are at, more than likely nine times out of 10, you will see Total Quality Logistics post a load in that state you're in and um, they work with you day one. So you day one in there, um, you can go ahead and call them and you can go ahead and book a load, just sign the carrier package and you off to, to, to run it from there. Um, the downside of TQL, I don't wanna, I don't wanna bash them. I don't wanna feel like I'm bashing them. I'm just giving them my experience and hopefully they can possibly look at this video and correct some of these mistakes. Um, and, um, so some of the some of the downfall is let's just say as a new carrier you just now put your truck to the test your trailer to the test to see you know basically what what can it do as far as hauling right um, and let's just say you have a breakdown you can have a mishap and it could be a breakdown just you know just you getting it fixed for one day and you miss your delivery time in one day um, TQL can definitely um, they can definitely start taking money out because you have missed your delivery date. That's one thing. Of course, it is business, but um, but yeah, they'll definitely take you know seventy five dollars or you know they'll start charging two hundred and fifty dollars or whatever just because you possibly missed their load or you haven't done tracking. Um, they do want. That's one thing that they always do is that they always require tracking. Some logistic companies um, that we have worked with that I'm gonna give you guys, they do not require any type of tracking. So you know you. You're good to go there. You know, sometimes it's a little weird. You just, you know, wherever you're at, you get, you know that you're you're being tracked. Somebody's watching you wherever you go. Um, that's a whole other video, but but yeah, you do have to get uh, you do have to sign up for tracking. So they do have two of them. They have Macro Point and they also have a TQL tracking. Um, you do have to sign up with both of those. Um, 
the other thing is that if you break down, and let's just say now it's going to take some days for you to get back on the road, what will happen is that T12 will submit a claim. They will do a claim on you. And basically, it's going to be for the load that you have. So they're going to say, well, you got to pay for the load now. So if that load was $1,000, they're going to say, well, now you got to take care of this $1,000. And you also got to take care of us sending somebody out to take the load off of your trailer and put it on somebody else's trailer, which is going to be a forklift person. So let's just say they pay somebody fifteen hundred to get the load off because they had to try. Uh, they had to travel. They had, you know they're using their own equipment, a forklift, and all of that or whatever, and they're taking it off and putting it on putting it on somebody else's trailer. That's fifteen hundred, and the load was a thousand dollars. Granted, the person is about to get paid that thousand dollars or whatever rate they they agreed on, but TQL is going to be saying, "Well, you delayed on the time, you broke down, and all of that. You still got to pay for that." So what will happen is that they will either take away from the loads that you've already done before, or they're gonna take away from the loads that you're about to do, right? And they'll just nickel and dime you out of those loads, right? So it may be $250 here, $300 here, um, $600 here. It just depends on whatever they, they, they choose to do. And they do not tell you how much they're gonna take out, right? So that's, that's just the downside to me as far as with TQL. I feel like it could be better communication. Um, as far as letting you know what's, what's, what's to, what to expect, because they will not tell you about a claim until the claim is already in the process, already in the works, and possibly maybe about to, uh, it's probably about to be completed. That's when they'll call you and let you know, hey, I'm from the claims department and you have a claim for this amount, right? Instead of telling you ahead of time. Um, so you can kind of know exactly how to navigate from that. Um, definitely taking away from your loads. You literally won't know. You'll just factor your load and they took that out. And these things could put you out of business. You know, it could put you out of commission because you got insurance you got to pay for. It. You know, you got a truck, you got a trailer. And if you're not paying for those things, what happens is either repossession or you get canceled from your insurance. So then you can't operate. So I would just say, just be on your P's and Q's with TQL. Um, like I said, they are, you know, they do have some great um, agents that definitely work there. And they will definitely keep you busy. They definitely will reach out. And I'm going to give you some of the pluses as well. You do have some great agents there um, that definitely, you know, want to take care of you and definitely check on your well-being as opposed to just making sure, hey, is my load there? Um, and you also, they also will have some people that will call you and say, hey, um, I noticed that you may be in the area of Arizona or you live in Arizona. And I got a load for you right now in Arizona going from here to here. Do you want to take it? Right. So they do do that as well, which is a, a great aspect of it. Um, so they're big and um, they definitely want to make sure that that, you know, um, their freight is, is or their load is, is going out. So um, that's it on TQL. Um, another one is set logistics. So set logistics is not as big, but they have kept us also um, rolling as well. Um, they don't always require tracking. Uh, fifth wheel freight, uh, we have done some loads with them as well. So fifth wheel freight is another one that you also guys want to look into. Um, cough logistics, they're very small, um, but cough logistics, they have um, they have some loads every now and then. And normally with the smaller ones, um, I, what I've noticed is that they, they pay, they're willing to pay a little bit more for their loads. So uh, it may be a smaller load, it may be a real light load, but they're willing to pay just because they don't post loads like that. And I'm pretty sure they just want their loads to be gone really quick when they do post just because they're, they're a smaller brokerage. Um, so we got, what well, we got TQL, Set Logistics, Fifth Wheel Freight, Cough Logistics. And let me, got, let me give you guys one more. The other one is going to be Infinity Logistics. So Infinity Logistics also doesn't require 
Um, it doesn't require any type of tracking as well. Um, and we've done some loads for them. Um, if any of the logistics is pretty good as well, they normally they will call too to see if um, if we have any loads that we want to go ahead and pick up or if we're, if we're empty. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the brokers that we have worked with that has kept us, you know, afloat and kept us busy. Um, a couple other logistic companies that I do want to give you guys is going to be National Logistics. So National Logistics is another one that you guys call. They work with Day One um, Authorities and also Franklin National. So Franklin National is also another um, brokerage that you guys can call on and they work with Day One as well. Again, you're going to have a lot of people um, that are going to tell you no, but I just want to go ahead and give you guys a few people that will tell you yes um, when you go ahead and start trying to book those loads. So, um, again, man, just continue, continue trying to persevere through all of this, man. It will be hectic your first month. Your first month will be hectic. Um, it will be nerve wracking. It will be frustrating. Um, just because, you know, you're trying to, to get loads, and you, you keep getting turned down, you keep getting told, you know, six months, you keep getting told 90 days, you keep getting told one year, um, but just continue to push through, and trust me, you'll, you'll, you'll find, you'll find the right broker, you'll find them, and, you know, they'll be willing to work with you to give you those, those loads. Um, I mean, that's it as far as my bullet points. But I will say this, man, is that uh, one thing I have been thinking about is doing like a live Q&A. Um, but I just wanted to see if I can get this page a little bit more traffic, a little bit more um, as far as subscribers before I actually did it. But I will say this, man, I, I put a challenge out there for, for, for you guys, right? Is that if I could get 30 people, start off with 30 people. So I can get 30 people in the comment section to say, go live. You guys can comment, go live. I will make a time where I'll come back into the studio and I will go live and do a live Q&A question and answer. And I'll answer all the questions that I can't answer uh, with you guys. Whatever whatever you guys have for me, um, I'll answer them through my experience and, or through somebody else's testimony or whatever. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to get it from somebody else. But I'll do a live Q&A with you guys. If I can get 30 people to comment, Q, or no, go live. So go live. Um, that's it. But, man, that is it for me today, guys. Um, I just want to go over that. Hopefully, man, this was informational, but also realistic for you guys as well. If you guys have questions, please put them in the comment section, and I'll try to get to them the best way I can. Um, again, man, we've been doing this now for two months now. Um, we just came off of, a, off of a good week, I feel like, for a new authority. Uh, we just came off a of $5,600 week. So, um, so yeah, man, it's, it's, it's only continued to climb up from here. Um, the first thing we're trying to do is making sure that we get to those six months. So I noticed, man, once you get to six months, about 90% of the brokers will work with you um, once you um, six months in. So that's our goal. Hopefully, man, this helps you guys. Hopefully, this gives you guys a better perspective. And again, this is not to kind of sway you in any kind of direction on what you should do or, or you know if you should start or not um not really in too much as far as trying to tell you guys hey you need to start or hey you don't need to start in the hot shot this is just makes basically to help you guys make an informed decision on your current situation and what you are expected to do when you get into hot shot um and i just want you guys to make an educational informed decision um uh, before you start and uh, knowing just when you can and when you can't start, all right? But if you guys got anything else for me, please leave it in the comment section. And until the next time, guys, I'll see you guys, and I'm out.